<laughs> well, uh, it's funny you say that, because uh, I'm going to go see a band tonight called Grotus. And uh, that's a band that should be talked about and that the whole world will know about, probably. There's a lot of bands that I think you could listen to now and not be able to tell what era they've come from. And I'll bet that those bands think that that's really magical and timeless, but it's bullshit. <laughs> it doesn't sound like anything. What would you like to see happen that would put your faith back in music? I don't know. People banging on dead bodies. What is God's flesh all about? <sighs> Listen to me telling you guys what bands are all about. Listen to me. I know. Uh, okay. Speaking of disco, I know that our guitar player a little earlier said that he didn't like disco. He's one guy and five guys. And I would have to speak for at least three other guys in the band. We want to become a disco band. We're here to defend disco from the likes of our guitar player, people like that, who really were asleep during the whole era and really missed out on the whole point. The last few Paula Abdul songs, I think, have been really great. That's not funny. Don't laugh. No, music sucks. I hate all music now. Um, I don't know. I really don't like to listen to music very much anymore. Why is that? Because you just think everyone's, no one's original? I don't know. I just, yeah, nothing's doing it. I'm not going to blame anybody, but I'll let you know when I figure it out, but I haven't figured it out yet, but... I don't know, I'm just not, a, I go into the record store and I look for like two hours. And I usually just end up going to the soundtrack section. But uh, yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's pretty sad. Grotus is, <laughs> Grotus is one of my favorite bands. They, uh, they're about um, um, real heavy, kind of industrial sort of sounds, but they're not like, you're, they're not really, I can't say that word industrial, that's a bad word. Um, well, they show, they have every industrial ingredient, to put it that way. But the end result is far, far more complicated and far more sick than, than any industrial band. One of the guy's quotes from the band was, uh, I think the interviewer said, do you think you're making any original sound? And out of guilt, he said something like, uh, <laughs> uh, he said something like, oh, gee. I guess to be original nowadays, you have to bang on a badger carcass or something like that. I don't want to do that just to be original. And I don't know, it just made me think, uh, well, I mean, God, I, I'd love to bang on a badger carcass. I think, I think most people would. I think it's probably a good thing if computers just take over music. Because computers are a lot more messed up than people. And the more messed up and farther away music gets from music, the better, the healthier it's going to be for music. I think computers could kind of take it to a new level. I'm all for it. People are, people are the worst. It's the worst thing about music is that people play it. <laughs> There's these huge bald guys. And they are so huge. And you wouldn't think a big guy would sing like this. And he's like, I'm too sexy for my cat. I'm too sexy for this and that and all that. It's great. So it was a really big hit in uh, England. Yeah, I think it's got to be English because it's just so far gone. What kind of music do they play? Easy listening. But it's really violent, satanic easy listening. It's a hard thing to kind of set a goal and reach it. Because if, well, if you set one, then you got to reach it. It's kind of boring. I think the only way to really progress is to be ashamed of what you've just done. and. It may be a strong word, but you, you, you got to do something completely different, and this album is, is, is going to be different. There's a couple, like, character sketches about imaginary people. That's what the White Trash one's about. It's about this real slob guy. Yeah. Kind of identify with him. <laughs> uh, we're actually going to do uh, eight more versions of that song, Epic. Different remixed versions. Have I answered anything? Yes, you have. You have. <laughs> There's a station in San Francisco that I really love to listen to that I'd like to pimp and say the name of. 
uh, Magic 61. They've been, they've, uh, it's kind of rearranged my life listening to that station. It uh, changes the way you think about uh, a lot of things. Um, uh, don't don't uh, run any of that. <laughs> uh, well, I'll start over. Do you have any personal goals for yourself in 92? Uh... Uh, kind of don't have really many goals at all. I would like to shave um, my entire body. I want to do that. And I want to... I want to catch a disease and then get rid of it. Nothing serious, you know, just like... I don't know. Was that offensive? <laughs> just like a, yeah, you know, like a little, just a little tiny one. Pass it along. Since we've been off, I've been a complete slouch. I haven't done anything. I'm way behind. I haven't even cleaned my house. Since I, I just pretty much gave up on a lot of things. One thing I've probably done most of is watch this um, TV evangelist named Robert Tilton and he's since then become one of my favorite people in the world and I really want to meet him someday he comes on like every night I guess I don't know what the deal is man. I can't stop watching him I've taped every episode I have like three months of uh, of Tilton on tape can you describe some of the situations under which you've written these new lyrics <coughs> um, I took a lot from uh, an L. Ron Hubbard personality test and some from fortune cookies. I went out and bought like a lot of fortune cookies and took some lyrics for that. That's a real positive song. Um, another one, kind of in inspired by this new neighborhood I moved into, just really white trash, disgusting neighborhood where all these creeps walk around and I was kind of inspired by that so I just sat in my car and watch people, fell asleep, woke up, wrote some words. Uh, there's a few about sex. Can't, can't really avoid that one. Um, yeah, yeah. For me right now, sex is a little kind of like music. You kind of got to get as far away from it as you can. And the, the farther away that sex is from sex, that's great. The better it is for sex. And uh, I'm making some sense here, huh? Also, it does not it won't sound like Faith No More really at all, which is, I think, a pretty good thing. And uh, I think a lot of people are going to go, what the hell is this? But it's kind of, I don't know, it kind of sounds like cinematic, pretty deeply involved in this revenge scheme for a while. And... Uh, you know how kind of like the most petty things mean the most? It was one of those things. I really had no grounds to be mad or to get revenge, but... Well, yeah, I did, God damn it! These bastards! <laughs> so, I mean, probably one of the goals... Or definitely one of my goals live is to kind of have people go, what was that? Was that a keyboard? Was that a sample? Was that a... Another thing we're thinking about doing is... Uh, Never told Jim this, so I hope he doesn't see this, but uh, we're thinking about um, putting an ad in a local music magazine that said, Faith No More, seeking new guitarist. Please call Jim, and then give Jim's number. We never really got around to doing that, but in theory, it was beautiful. But it's a real, like, family kind of area. It's really disgusting. Fuck, whatever. What? In just a few words, can you describe what life on the road is like? Oh, my God. Uh, did you write these questions? Mm-hmm. Do you hate them? <laughs> Just thought I'd ask. I don't know. Going to pawn shops or uh, 
calling up like um, livestock agencies and getting a chicken and chopping its head off. I mean, it doesn't happen very often. And um, it always seems to happen at the wrong time. I'm not saying that. You know what? Can I go to the bathroom? Sorry. I mean, what can you do? I mean, I, I've never, I'd never met this girl. And uh, so she started sending audio versions of her letters, which uh, were very scary. Scary enough that I used them on my outgoing answering machine. <laughs> you only let yourself be tied up if you really know somebody. <laughs> A lot of trust involved in that. We were actually, during the uh, during that period before the record that I was telling you about, where Jim Martin was a little scarce, we were thinking about hiring a private detective just to see what was going on in his life, because we couldn't get any guitar parts out of him. And uh, that's why I was really, you know, curious to see what he said about our new record, because, you know, he knows so much about it. Um, <laughs> so I got her off the bus, and... She was just like kind of wandering around still. She goes, Mike, wait, wait. I have something to give you. And she held her hand out like this. And I, uh, uh, I, had my, I held my hand out and I go, okay, what it is? And she just goes like this. There's nothing in her hand. And she goes, I go, what is it? And she goes, it's an elf. <laughs> so I said, oh, it's, thanks. If there are any obsessed fans out there, I'd like to um, give you my uh, home address. I'd like to zoom in on this. He's in care of my friend Robert Tilton. See that? And that's uh, 1340 Mission Street, San Francisco, California, 94103. And, you know, you don't have to send anything, but we were touring with Voivod and Soundgarden. There's like three band bill. And uh, we were somewhere, I don't remember where it was. And uh, this girl, I guess, was giving blowjobs to each member of everyone on each bus. And she'd gone through Soundgarden's, gone through Voivod's. Who, who she did that to, of course, I don't know. But uh, and she got to our bus, like the crews, everything. I mean, there's a lot of people on those buses. And uh, proceeded to do her thing with some people on our bus. And... Uh, I guess she was like done or whatever. <laughs> and uh, I just like asked her, I said, God, what, do, do you like doing that stuff? Is that, is that great? What's it, what do you get out of it? And she said, uh, she got really offended and really mad. And she said, and kind of like had a little heart to heart with me and said, this is, I don't have any friends, okay? This is the only way I can make friends. Hi, this is Mike uh, Patton and you're, well. And this is. Okay. In three, two. Hi, I'm Mike Patton from Faith No More, and this is The Week in Rock. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Kind of boring. Do you want to do it again? Okay. okay. In three, two. Hi, I'm Mike Patton. No. Hi. No. Hi, I'm Mike Patton from Faith No More. And you're watching The Week in Rock.